Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Now, I mentioned in Ask Dave video number 1030, 1030, that I was going to test a battery for a year. That battery is the Golden Mate 100 amp hour lithium ion battery and it comes complete with its own battery management system and stuff like that. I encourage you to go look at that video if you're not familiar with it. It's at the little thing up in the top. If you click on that, you can go there and then come back here uh, when you're finished. I went and looked at that video today and I think I did a pretty thorough job of explaining the battery. And what I'm going to give you now is essentially my one year report. Now, as it turns out, another battery equal capacity from another manufacturer showed up at the door and so I'm going to do the one year test on that. I've actually been 13 months on this. Well, here's the bottom line. The battery is great. It never caused me one iota of a problem. So I'm just going to review a couple things that I did. The battery is sitting under the desk and I'm going to show you how I've connected it. And then I'm going to talk about the charge controller. The thing is charged by a 24 volt solar panel, 250 watt solar panel, which can produce about seven amps uh, at 20, well, it'd actually be closer to 30 volts. And then that is taken by this little nondescript thing and I'll show you where and how to get this, that is the charge controller. It's a maximum power point tracking charge controller. So I can get up to about 14 amps going to the battery's charge current. And that's pretty good for 14.6 volt charging. Now, let's take a look at the whiteboard here. Now, if you put the negative terminal and the positive terminal, which we want in red. This is the positive, and that's the negative, okay? Now, I want to tell you how I connected things because this is important. Now, this is a lithium iron phosphate battery. Lithium is an element. Iron, which is Fe, of course, comes from the old term ferrous which is probably from the Greek or Latin, everything is. Lithium iron phosphate. Now a phosphate is P, phosphorus, with O4. Okay, this is one single chemical, phosphate. It's phosphorus with four oxygen atoms, iron and lithium. Now, uh, for those, uh, just as an aside, for those of you who have been watching the news, this element right here is really hard to come by. The world supply right now is in China. There are vast unmined deposits in the United States, but we can't get it for any cheaper than what the Chinese would sell it to us for, and they know that. They keep the price just below what it would cost for us to mine it in the U.S. Now there's new battery technologies taking the place of this. This is very mature battery technology. The lead uh, acid batteries are long out of date. This is mature technology. It's what they use in cars. It's what they use for solar systems now and so on. Okay, so it's the lithium that makes them a little bit expensive. Now, I want you to look at how I wired this. The load is over here. I'll just draw it as a simple load. This is my connector for all the batteries. So this is grounded to a nice ground system. And there is a wire over here. That's the grounding for the battery. So it's grounded in. Now to the load, we take another connection to that terminal, connect it to here, and the other one and connect it to here. This is positive. So if you look at my power distribution system, I've got two things coming off of here. One is the ground. It's a great big one inch wide braid that goes to the station inside the house, single point ground. Okay, 
this one right here is the load return that comes over here. And then this comes up to the positive, and that's all great. But how do you charge it? Now, one way, in fact, I showed it in the video 1030, is if you put a charge controller here, plus 14.6 volts there, and your ground there, it'll charge. But what happens if this comes loose from the battery? You no longer have the battery in the circuit. What you end up with is the solar panel feeding the system directly, and the solar panel cannot supply enough current to keep the voltage up when I'm using my radio and transmit. So we don't do that. We'll take that out here, and I changed this so that I had a, I've got a solar panel here with all its various little accoutrements, a charge controller here. Okay, so this can go up to like 31 or 32 volts during the day because it's a so-called 24 volt panel. It actually puts out more than that and the relationship with the current voltage is such that it tries to keep a constant current flowing through here. Solar panels are current driven and we're going to drive this with a voltage so we need this little charge controller in here. Now I take the negative out of here and I connect it under the same screw that holds all these together. So if this screw comes loose, the charging circuit is disconnected. And of course the positive comes over here to this screw right here. Now, by the way, I will tell you that there are fuses and stuff in here. And I think I put a fuse in this circuit too. But the point being, if this comes loose for some reason, I'm not feeding the solar panel directly into the load. Now, it won't come full at 24 volts because this thing converts everything down to 14.6 volts. Okay, and that would be trying to drive this thing here. But it can only do 7 amps. doesn't matter what the voltage is. That's why we use the little converter. So it'll give 7 amps at 32 volts to a maximum power point tracker that'll put out 14.6 volts at approximately... Well, uh, let's say 13 to 14 amps. Okay, now, the charging intelligence for this thing is inside the battery. You just offer it 14.6 volts, and all the electronics at the top of the battery will take care of the rest. And it'll stop drawing current when it's fully charged. Now, some people think lithium-ion batteries should be only charged about two-thirds full most of the time. Fine, if you like to do that. My solar panel brings the voltage all the way back up, and it won't put very much current in an amp, maybe two amps, till this thing gets pretty full, and then the charging current drops off uh, dramatically during the day. It gets a daily cycle of some current, no current, some current, no current. So it gives it a chance to rest. Okay, that's how I had the thing hooked up. Now I'm about to put another battery in there to do the one year test on. And I'm going to connect it exactly the same way. Now I want to show you this little device. I got this at Impulse Electronics. This connects to the solar panel and this connects to the battery. Okay, this is the charging circuit, the battery. This goes out to the solar panel. This thing is $38 at Impulse Electronics. And I want to take a look at their webpage because I want you to see it. Okay, so it's ImpulseElectronics.com. And the reason I mention this is because I bought it from him at the Hamfest. This one right here has the Anderson power pole connectors or you can go with the one that uses the, the standard solar connectors. I like the PowerPoint. They're a lot easier to deal with, okay? Now, this will go up to 300 watts. The panel is 250, okay? It doesn't look like much. There's no adjustments, just the heat sink. I've never seen it hot. 
Now, it says it's designed for charging bioeno, I would say bioeno type lithium iron phosphate batteries. You can input in the range of 20 to 50 volts, so it will handle a 24 volt panel. Because a 24 volt panel open circuit can go up over 30 volts. Output is a constant 14.6. Now, if you look at the front of a lithium ion battery, and here is one. This is also golden mate, but only 20 amp hours. It says the charge voltage is 14.4 to 14.6. And this thing will maintain that constant voltage. Current 4 amps or 10 amps max. Well, you're not going to get that out of the, that other thing. It, it'll take what it will take. Continuous discharge current, 20 amps. This thing will run... A regular HF rig, okay, operating temperatures, so on and so forth. Now this says 12.8 volts. That is a carryover from the old lead acid batteries. This thing actually gets down to around 13.3. So it's got a little more oomph in it than your classic lead acid do. And I've put the Anderson power pole connector on it to make it easy to use. Now a couple things to look at down here. Maximum power, 300 watts. 250 volt panel, okay. Battery type, the bioeno or equivalent. Well, this is equivalent. Bioeno has really hit the ham radio market, and I have one of their batteries right here. This battery right here, I picked up at Dayton a few years ago. It says 12 volts, it's not 12 volts, put 13 in there. 12 amp hours, and it is 20 amp max continuous discharge current. This also could run an HF radio, though not necessarily for terribly long. Okay, so it's all automatic, conversion efficiency 95%. IP rating IP67 means it can get somewhat wet, but it's not designed for underwater use, of course. Short circuit protection, yes. Over temperature protection, yes. Die cast aluminum, and it's got a one year warranty. Now, this outfit sells lots of little power packs and things like that for go boxes and so on and so forth. I've met the guy who runs it, very nice guy. So, that concludes our review, the one year review of the Golden Mate 100 amp hour uh, lithium iron phosphate battery. It has been zero problems, no trouble hooking it up no issues. It has a little screw that goes into the top to hold things down tight. Not the old-fashioned clamp kind on the big lead plates that the old lead acid has. There are no emissions. It's completely sealed. You can run it upside down, sideways, whatever you want to put it into some place. You can't do that so much with a lead acid battery unless it's a sealed type lead acid battery. Now, lead acid batteries are obsolete. The lithium iron phosphate are being used for deep cycle. You still use the lead acid batteries as starting batteries for motors. Because even though the voltage drops very low, it can crank a whale of a lot of current through that starter motor. And that's what is important in doing the starting. Don't use lithium ion battery for a starting circuit. The battery management system will just take it right out of the loop right there and you won't get anywhere. So I like the battery. I've got this little 20 amp hour battery. I've got this 20 amp hour battery that they sent me to. I did a review of that a while back also. Very nice battery, very easy to charge. In fact, what I do for charging is quite interesting. Take a look at this. This is the little Pavono PS305. I reviewed this ages ago. So let's just turn it on. Okay, 14.6 volts, and I'm going to connect this here, and this this little thing got tweaked somehow. Okay, now it's got a constant 14.6 volts, and it is putting current into the battery right there at 14.6. That is all you have to do to charge these types of lithium ion batteries. The ones that have the battery management system inside the top here. This one does also. See the 
the line is right there. What's up above this is the uh, charge system. So you don't have to worry about bulk absorption or these different kinds of charges. It just does it all all by itself. And you've already noticed this number coming down here because this is a fully charged battery. So it very quickly is going to start rejecting current and get down to basically zero when the battery management system will will cut it off. So there you have it. I mean, that's that makes it easy to charge. Now, this same company, Impulse Electronics, makes a little lithium ion battery charger where you can control the current if you're charging a small one. Okay, that's a different product. And yes, I have reviewed that too. So there you have it. I'm excited about this Golden Mate battery. Like I said, was flawless. It did everything I asked of it with no complaining, no issues. It just hides out of the way under the table, out of foot reach, so I don't kick the thing or something like that. Now, this is the lithium iron phosphate chemistry is a stable chemistry. These are not the kind of batteries that you hear of catching on fire. Those are a slightly different uh, chemistry. This is pretty safe. That doesn't mean you can't make it do something bad, but that's what the battery management system is for, to manage the battery so that it's safe and useful. So there you have it. If you like this channel, why not become a member of the channel and a subscriber too, of course. Members get special benefits, members and PayPal subscribers and the patrons all get early access to videos. And some of this is like two weeks or more. They get the access. That's all available for you to those who help us keep this channel going. And for those who haven't yet had that opportunity, I just appreciate your subscription because that tells YouTube that this is a channel worth watching. So, until we next meet, 73.